Welcome back to another episode of Nidal. Can you believe this? It's episode 50, even though I can't believe it because I've done way more than 50 videos for this series. But this is, I guess, officially episode number 50. And um, actually, I, I was uh, pretty inspired when I was uh, working on uh, this uh, project. I, honestly, all these cinematics, the intro cinematics that I captured were meant because of, or at least were focused on this uh, area near the Ikea and the dealerships that I put together like forever ago during a live stream. Because uh, I thought that I was going to work on that uh, area of the city. So, uh, yeah, at least you get to see some cinematics of the adjacent area of where today's spill will actually going to take place, which is uh, just slightly over on the side of this uh, little bay that we have uh, on the opposite side of the city. And, uh, yeah, we're going to be working on a cargo harbor. Some of you may remember that uh, we already kind of have a cargo harbor on the other side of the city. It's uh, certainly a much smaller one. Um, and I figured this this area kind of, uh, it's, it's prime real estate to do a much larger one. It's not going to be huge given this relative size of Nidal. This is not going to be a huge town. Um, but, you know, I feel like it deserves a slightly bigger uh, cargo harbor. And uh, I was going to you know, I, I was primarily inspired by uh, a, the recent uh, global build-off that uh, Paradox put together. I was uh, one of the judges, and um, yeah, the, the builds on that uh, on that contest were pretty amazing. If you haven't seen them, uh, I'm gonna include a link in the description so you can watch the full uh, the full stream. And uh, uh, I think the format was slightly. Uh, better for me because <laughs> I get to criticize uh, other people's uh, work without doing uh, a lot of work myself. <laughs> uh, but other than that, like the actual um, the actual things that uh, people have put together for this uh, contest were like amazing. It was obviously around the, uh, the latest DLC, the Sunset Harbor, which uh, I've yet to play with. I'm, I'm not actually using any of those assets in this um, in this project. In fact, I don't think I'm going to keep adding uh, DLC specific. Um, assets into Nidal because uh, uh, you know it's already getting it's, it's kind of I, w I want people to be able to play with this save game after I'm done and if I add a ton of uh, DLCs which I already added quite a few it yeah it just makes it uh, harder for people to actually just buy everything so um, I want to try to keep uh, things uh, a bit more uh, optimized uh, for the near future. By the way, if you want to play with the save game, just a little shameless self-promotion, you can get uh, the save game for this very episode and all the previous episodes uh, from my Patreon page uh, for a small contribution. And if you can't do it, but you still want to play with the save game, just uh, wait until I'm finished with the series and it will be free for everyone. It's going to be available in the workshop. All right. Uh, that was a quick, uh, a quick ad. Um, so, um, yeah, so the, I forgot what I was uh, going with this. Oh yeah, the cargo hover. So the previous cargo hover was pretty small and it was mostly an industrial area that was just adjacent to the water. So I sort of integrated some docks in that uh, general area. But this one, it's, it's like a whole area of the city that was purposely designed to be a uh, cargo harbor. And I'm using uh, the refinery assets from the Industries DLC in this case, because um, I don't think I've ever used them before, aside from like some vanilla projects that I that I done. Uh, when the, actually, we did the trailers for, for the Industries DLC. I think that was the last time I actually used those assets. Uh, the, the, the last time and the only time uh, when I used those assets. But uh, yeah, as far as the terraforming aspect of this goes, you can see that uh, I'm just going for that typical, it's a very unique look when cities sort of expand their territory under the water and you have like this very sharp, like non-organic lines kind of going into the water. That, that was like sort of the prime uh, aesthetic that I was going after. So these are some of these uh, industries assets that I uh, was trying to include here. Uh, obviously, it came with a lot of uh, extra decorations that I didn't think fit quite nicely. Uh, specifically, uh, one one thing that I want to point out that you probably saw there is I removed the fences from uh, around the tents. I think Industries was uh, no, actually, I think it was Park Life that first introduced the network-based fences. But in this case, 
everything was kind of built into the asset itself. And if you use move it, you can't quite select those things to get rid of them. And also prop it up doesn't work because it's not a prop, it's a network fence. So um, if you press like alt or control or one of those like key modifiers in move it, you're allowed to select these nodes and delete them or move them or do whatever you want. Um, so uh, that's uh, something that I, uh, you know, just a little uh, PSA there. If you want to get rid of some extra assets and you don't know how to uh, prop it up, usually is the way to go for removing props that are built into to assets. But in this case, network fences uh, need to be removed that uh, way. So just something uh, that uh, maybe you didn't know. Uh, and in this case, you know, just pretty straightforward detail uh, procedure, just adding random props that are kind of related to the theme that I picked, at least for this part of the harbor. Uh, it's actually going to be kind of split into three main areas. Uh, this is sort of the oil refinery type area. And then on the other half, we're going to have a bit of a container, a container yard. Man, words are hard. Container yard. Uh, with uh, you know, just a whole bunch of containers and trucks and, uh, well, definitely you're going to have uh, functional uh, harbors. Uh, it seems like the the DIY docs that I put together are still <laughs> working after the last update, thankfully, because that way I don't have to update them. Uh, I don't even have the source files, I don't think. Uh, so that's a bit of a relief. I mean, there's always people complaining about things in the comments. Uh, I don't usually read them all that much, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, unless it breaks for me, I usually don't update things because uh, I'm already like way over my head in terms of things that I got to do on a regular basis. So um, that's why that's another reason why we didn't update the trams or anything like that. Just as long as they mostly work for the project that I'm in, I'm just going to share it with everyone. And, you know, if it doesn't work, I'm really sorry about that. <laughs> um, and uh, because I wasn't sure how big of uh, or how long of a video this was going to be, I decided to start working on the other area uh, facing the opposite side of this uh, little bay. And uh, I wanted to sort of keep a bit of a nature trail with like a beach access. So unfortunately, I kind of finished this halfway. It's not going to be completely done. So hopefully in the next episode, we're going to finish this as well as decorating the commercial area next to the port. Uh, another problem that I always face whenever I do like a lot of uh, terraforming and water related projects is that you get the massive tsunami. And uh, because I don't do this super often, I forgot that there is this option. Uh, if the if you look at the bottom toolbar, the icon, the water icon that's left to so basically three left from the magnifying glass but uh in case you're wondering that the one from surface painter the the concrete one the one next to it to the left it's a water control um i don't even know which mod included that at this point i've it's like i've been there forever uh for many years uh and uh there's an option when you click on that uh mod that allows you to reset the water level so Whenever you're gonna cause a tsunami, because let's say you bump the bottom of the ocean, the, the ocean way, way high up, and you know that if you start the simulation, it's just gonna have a massive wave that's gonna run over the entire city. You can click on reset water level, and it's gonna bring the water level to the normal uh, aspect of it. I think if you have like water sources in different places, that may mess things up for a bit. Uh, eventually, it's gonna you know sort of sort uh, sort itself out. But at least you can avoid having that massive way that will just destroy your entire city and is going to push all the cars and all that stuff. In fact, I got a bunch of abandoned buildings when the water wave came in, even though I have mods that prevent it. But I think there's specific assets that after the natural disaster CLC, uh, they just, uh, I don't know, they still keep getting destroyed and if you want to rebuild them it, there it asks you to have like a recovery team of sorts like I'd, i've never played for you know with the actual game mechanics and so I, I don't even know what that means or what kind of uh, building any to plot so uh, i ended up just copying and pasting with move it and replacing the buildings that got destroyed but um pretty handy feature if you're having this issue where you're doing a lot of terraforming in the water and your city keeps getting waves 
Uh, just uh, click reset uh, water level a bunch of times, actually, because it's going to take a while for for the uh, uh, water mechanics to sort of figure themselves out. And uh, and then you're good. You just avoid having a massive tsunami, which will also halt uh, your city while that's it's happening. Um, another thing that I did here that I was surprised on how well it came out. It's not perfect just because of the definition that uh, the terrain in this game uh, has, but um, we've done breakwaters like this before, like the ones you see on the screen, but I was able to achieve a much thinner one by combining the um, the terraforming network uh, basically at a high level and then at a low level just underwater and very close to one another. So you get like a very narrow uh, sort of gap where you can place the breakwater rocks on top. And I'm using that uh, those breakwater rocks that I actually made, but they were re-released by someone else in a variety of colors. I kind of mentioned that a couple episodes ago. Uh, so you can go check that out if you haven't yet. Um, but uh, it also comes in a much larger footprint and it looks uh, pretty good, actually. You can see uh, them on the screen right now as well. But uh, yeah, by basically combining all these terraforming networks uh, and just kind of keeping them close together, you can achieve a much narrower, much more realistic uh, breakwater sort of a chunk of uh, rocks that extrudes into the ocean, um, as opposed to the ones uh, we've done many, many episodes ago when we were working on the Citadel. So I should probably go back and revisit that, maybe, perhaps. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> but uh, I think the result is, is much, uh, much better. And also, it helps a lot if you kind of, uh, I'm sure you've noticed, especially if you do a lot of work with Surface Painter, that there's like an underlying like invisible grid underneath the uh, surface of, of uh, City Skylines that kind of follows the edges of the map at a, like almost perfect 90 degree angles. So if you align those, um, those terraforming networks just on those angles, uh, the results that you can get are even better because otherwise you don't you get all these like jagged sort of edges that don't look super good and um, you know you can kind of fake uh, the look of your brick water rocks by rearranging them and sort of uh, take advantage of those imperfections if you want so there's you know way around it but it's so much easier if magically your breakwater rocks are aligned with the edges of the city at perfect 90 degree angles so something to uh, consider. And uh, because this is, uh, you know, kind of an industrial area for the most part, and uh, just decided to make it a little grungy with some overgrown uh, foliage, uh, especially uh, coming out of the breakwater rocks and then just chunks of concrete that uh, are probably less used than others. So uh, you're going to see a lot of cracks and a lot of decals and a lot of uh, grass tufts sort of growing uh, between those cracks. And... Um, you know, this this whole area, I wasn't sure at this point if it's just going to be like different properties. Uh, so like imagine these being like public road networks that uh, connect a area that's, you know, the oil refinery or whatever the oil tanks are. And then the container yard that's going to be like a different company. Uh, so what I decided to do instead, which I think is how these places usually work, is this whole area, all these road networks are actually already private. And at the very end, one of the very last clips is me adding like a toll booth sort of entrance, a very minor toll booth or like security checkpoint of sorts. Um, so that way I only needed to fence the uh, the perimeter uh, on the, that, that, that's next to the Ikea. Probably hard to explain as I'm like showing you something completely different here, but uh, the the alternative was to like fence this whole area out where you see right now, just adding fences in between all these roads, which uh, I mean, it could have been something to try out, but I think the approach that I ended up going with not only is much simpler to to achieve, but also I think actually makes more sense and it's technically supposedly more realistic in that regard. Uh, so here we go with the container yard, uh, pretty straightforward, just putting down the decals and then just filling in the gaps with a variety of uh, container packs. These are from Avania, unless I'm mistaken. Have them for forever and they look freaking amazing, and especially one of the things that I like, I mentioned this a million times, is the fact that these are all like generic brands. Uh, so in general, I try to not use 
uh, brands, uh, especially because I don't want to advertise them for free, even though we have some BP trucks uh, over there. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't find oil tankers that, uh, or at least oil trucks that uh, weren't branded. I'm sure there, there, I mean, I haven't looked for this episode. I'm sure there's probably some now, but last time I checked, there weren't. So those were the better looking ones. So it's like, okay, fine, let's just go with these ones. But uh, in general, it's just something that I avoid. Uh, just, I don't know, very personal, uh, I guess, design choice. Um, and uh, here, one thing that I'm that I'm trying to do just to make it look a bit more industrial and less empty, because just having a, just a, chunk of like concrete that has no detail whatsoever doesn't look super great so uh, I'm just adding these hatch uh, network based uh, uh, decals of sorts uh, they're not really decals they're just straight up network based uh, uh, segments that uh, kind of have a decal look that uh, I don't know thought it looked uh, nice and once you added that it's just like everything like kind of looks way more legit it's it's crazy how like adding certain details just instantly just gives you that uh that like official look that i don't know just changes it from being like oh sure yeah you put down like a building and i covered it with surface painter and then you're done no like it just makes it feel like much more realistic i guess is what i'm trying to say uh and same thing over here in this uh in this area so i'm trying to add uh, a lot of uh, damage decals in general just to make this area way more grungy than everything around it and uh, of course you're gonna see me add a lot of concrete expansion joints that's kind of my thing <laughs> uh and uh yeah this is what i was talking about a second ago this are like the security entrances uh toll booth uh i don't know whatever you want to call it uh, i think i think it's mostly a security checkpoint uh so we have the two uh, barriers i think this is actually part of a kit for a uh like a French freeway uh, toll booth uh, section, <laughs> but uh, I'm repurposing them uh, so that they are a bit of a security checkpoint. So we have some bollards protecting the the little cabin in the middle, and then I'm just uh, fencing out the different areas. It's crazy how much um, how much usage this whole area got. As as soon as I connected the the actual docks and just putting down a few buildings here and there like there was just massive amounts of people uh flocking into this area for work i guess <laughs> even though yeah i guess we now that i look at the rci because I, I honestly didn't look at that at all when i was putting this together but uh yeah we definitely have a, a deficit in terms of uh industrial or office jobs so no wonder a lot of people were flocking into this area. So actually one thing I ended up doing uh, as we we're approaching the end of the video uh, is I extended the bus line that sort of lead to this lower area of the city. So now there's a bus that goes directly into uh, this area so that workers can, uh, well, basically they were walking from the tram stop that's like way over where the Ikea is uh, all the way to here, which I don't know, that doesn't seem reasonable. So. A bus line, you know, dropping people off uh, in the middle of this area was probably a better uh, solution. Uh, and uh, over here, I'm just adding some final touches, just adding some a little bit of a color because everything looked a bit mo monochromatic, uh, just uh, too black and white for the most part. So adding some yellow curves here and there, just some accent colors, I think is uh, uh, a result that, uh, or just a, a small little detail that adds a lot of uh, depth to it if, if you if you want to use those terms uh, and uh yeah there you are you can see some people walking by there there were a lot more than that no there you go yeah, that's a much clearer shot of what i was describing a second ago uh i started to add a few more details on this part of the city but i realized that the video was already a bit too long so this is where i decided to stop and uh, if you want to see me work on those things you're gonna have to wait until the next episode but for now uh, please do enjoy this uh, before and after and if you enjoyed this episode so far please consider giving this video a like and uh, subscribe if you've been watching everything up to this point but uh yeah this is uh, pretty much all that i have for you today thank you so much for watching and uh hope to see you in the next one